I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can you join me in prayer, please? Supreme Architect of the Universe, invoke thy blessing at this time. And this meeting thus be conducted in peace and closed in harmony. Amen. Good, e good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Thursday, October 17th, 2013 public business meeting here in the town of Luke, the city building in Luke, Maryland. Commissioners, are there any additions or deletions to our agenda? No, sir. No, sir. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes of our October 10th, 2013 public meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. There's been much discussion at our commissioners meeting to <clears throat> bring part of the arts into our meetings. We've talked about theme nights, we've talked about show tunes, and <laughs> I've been practicing. This is the report of the president. Awesome. So, I've brought my keyboard tonight. <laughs> Join in if you know the song. It's yours. Jingle bells. Something else? My fault. Okay. Be careful. Well, the fruits are flying. Luckily, the attorney is not here, or I would have to go into the show tunes of uh, maybe uh, Old Man River or something like that. But we'll we'll save that for another night. If that's okay with you, sir. Okay. All right, commissioners. Really, what we're here for is special recognition for the New Page Corporation's celebration of 125 years in Allegheny County. Mr. Diaz. Sir. I'll turn it over to you, sir. Thank you very much, and uh, good evening, Commissioner. It's uh, my distinct honor and privilege to be here tonight, not only with the good folks on the town of Luke, but to also uh, help the commissioners honor a uh, uh, has been a pillar of our community now for 125 years. That is the New Page Corporation. What uh, many, many years ago began as a Piedmont Pulp and Paper Company of Allegheny County, um, and then became the West Virginia Paper Company, West Vaco, and Meet West Vaco, and now New Page. Uh, no matter through the years how the names changed, the uh, what what that um, what those names meant to this community and to uh, the economics of our county and the whole region really are, are just, um, it, it, it's hard to put into words. And when you talk about a, a 50th anniversary or of anything, you really think, boy, that's a, a major milestone. But we're talking about 125 years uh, that New Page has been uh, producing paper, employing many, many people from, uh, from not only Allegheny County, but our neighboring uh, states and counties. So with that, this is a special day. Um, the Allegheny County Commissioners are here. Uh, with the town of Luke to, to honor New Page and uh, say congratulations on achieving this uh, monumental milestone. Um, at this point, though, I'd like to ask uh, my good friend Rick Watro, the uh, mill manager from, uh, for the Luke Mill, to step up and uh, uh, to say a few words, Rick, and uh, uh, as always, welcome. And uh, I'm sure when you're done your talk, uh, the commissioners have a few uh, few things they'd like to bestow upon you. All right. Thank the you. Well, thank you. Sure. Appreciate it. Well, it's outstanding to be here this evening, all right, on behalf of the 830 Luke Mill employees. 
and all of the predecessors that I had before this point in time because I think you might think I've been at the mill for 125 years and I'm a tad short. All right. And that it's an honor to be here to accept this recognition for the mill for what they have done. All right. Uh, since joining the mill in 1978, I've seen over $1.2 billion invested in this facility across the street. And that's not in addition to what we spend on an annual basis maintaining the facility. So it's been a big part of this community, and this community has been a big part to the Lee Page Mill. You know, certainly uh, I've been here almost 35 years, but I've been part of generations. I know one individual that has four generations in his family that worked at the facility, and that's an outstanding thing to be able to say that that number of people in a single family has helped make this mill what it is today. Today, we have two paper machines compared to one time when we had nine, but we still make more paper today than we did back then. You know, we have a significant impact to the, to the, uh, to the local economy, almost about $200 million a year impact. You know, and both state, I should say county, and town support and but made this thing really possible to stay in one location 125 years and feel that we've been part of this community this county for all that period of time has been outstanding i do appreciate all of your support the individuals that work at the mill the individuals that live in the town of luke that help us every day make paper so we can continue our operation so thank you very much for this honor, and I appreciate being here this evening. Thank you. Rick, as mentioned, we do have a couple special tokens of appreciation. We have a citation here that I want to read. We'll do that here in a second. Um, but today being this 125th celebration, and I can't say the word, Quinn. Quas Quincentennial. Quas Quincentennial. 125 years, everyone. <laughs> I can't say that word. But I can sing. You want me to sing the joke? No. No. <laughs> okay. All right. This day is a special day, and the Allegheny County Commissioners are celebrating the 125th anniversary of the founding of Luke Mill. Uh, this revered manufacturer, one of Allegheny County's major employers, have had different official names over the years. And in our hearts, uh, the famed in institution is simply the mill, the Luke Mill. Now our remembrance for this celebration is made in the USA and contains all things Allegheny. If you look behind you, we have a classic wagon of solid red oak made in the USA, hand built with the pride in Janesville, Wisconsin. From 1915 to 1940, the Janesville Coaster was advertised as a wagon to haul heavy loads of coal wood, ice, and many more necessary items. It was a standard of quality. A replica wagon was made by the Wisconsin Wagon Company in 1978, and the company of two employees continues to this day. This wagon is registered with the number nameplate 5163 to enable future generations to determine the age of their heirloom. Weren't you at uh, the making of like 100 or 110 of the wagon? Number 75 of the wagon, okay. <clears throat> the wagon is filled with all things Allegheny. Allegheny County has an abundance of natural resources. Here is split wood from a Mount Savage farm. There is maple syrup drawn from the trees in Corriganville and honey from there as well. You'll see signs of fall. Allegheny County grown apples, Indian corn, gourds, and a pumpkin. There is apple butter cooked the old-fashioned way with a copper kettle over, over an open fire. The wagon has strawberry and raspberry preserves made from fruit grown at Walnut Ridge Farm in Flintstone. And in, in its heyday, the Jamestown wagon was also used to haul cans of milk. Today, there are half and half from Potomac Farms Dairy. Potomac Farms is headquartered in Pennsylvania and has been a manufacturing facility in Allegheny County. 
The wagon is filled with bread from Caporelli's Italian Bakery. Use the jams. I might want to open that up right now. Um, and downtown Cumberland, award-winning ice cream from the Queen City Creamery and McFarland's Chocolates in businesses of three generations in Frostburg. There is an Allegheny County-inspired blanket manufactured here and an official flag of Allegheny County. We like to say that the flag prominently features at Luke Mill Spokeshead. The wagon holds today the Cumberland Times News, a boutique of, uh, of dried lavender grown at the Old Time Farm, Lavender Farm in Old Town, and has accents of native rhododendron. Finally, to be unveiled, unveiled is a commission drawing by uh, Angela Hedrick, an Allegheny County native and resident artist. County Commissioners and Allegheny County Department of Economic and Community Development presents this remembrance of the new Loop Mill Manager, Richard J. Watra. Made in the USA, all things Allegheny. Thank you very much for all you do, professionally and personally, to help Allegheny County residents from one end to the other. Thank you. Also need to give a special thank you uh, to Mayor Clemens and all council members for their hospitality, as well as Clerk Treasurer Jeannie K. Gentry for her kind and helpful assistance with this meeting arrangement. Hey, how are you? Good, Good to see you. Rick, if I may, meet you at the podium again under this citation. Allegheny County, Maryland, official citation. The Board of Allegheny County Commissioners recognize, appreciates, congratulates, and salutes the Loop Mill, Allegheny County's oldest manufacturer, 125th year celebration, 1888, the Piedmont Pulp and Paper Company of Allegheny County, 2013, New Page Corporation. All three county commissioners with the Allegheny County seal. Congratulations and thank you, sir. Two on our agenda is a citation for the Finance Department wins a national award, Certificate of Achievement for Excellent in Financial Reporting. Mr. Jason, what good, good news do you have for us, sir? Uh, good news for the 21st time in a row. Thankfully, uh, we received the GFOA Certificate of Achievement again for uh, fiscal year 2012 on our uh, comprehensive financial statements that we have here. Uh, very happy to get this award. Um, as you guys know, we've had plenty of turnover in the finance office over the last couple of years, and this is one of the things that we wanted to make sure we kept up. It's something good that um, Jerry Grant and Jay George started and got going, uh, and, and Pam Smith and I tend to continue. And uh, I have a big thanks to Pam on this one. She actually does all of the work on this, and Pam, and Pam did not want to be here to be committed. Uh, she's happy to do the job and do well. So, just very grateful tonight that we've been able to do it. We intend to uh, continue on the 22nd year, well on our way with the audit, and hopefully many more years to come. Great. 
thank you, Jason, because I know that that is quite an honor. I, mean, I know you're doing it with very little staff, and when Jerry retired, I knew he was a burden with the children, a big burden. So thank you very much. Well, they were basketball. Yeah. Uh, I think it says a lot that we didn't have to close down for three weeks in the town <laughs> to uh, get our books in order. Yeah, we don't have to close down anytime soon. Thank you very much. Commissioners, will you join me to present this citation, please? Allegheny County Government, be it here known to all, this official citation is awarded to Allegheny County Department of Finance. Whereas we, the County Commissioners of Allegheny County, Maryland, wish to publicly recognize the Allegheny County Department of Finance staff who com uh, co competently serve the citizens and stakeholders of Allegheny County. Whereas for the 21st consecutive year, Allegheny County's Department of Finance earned their Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting for the Government Financial Officer Association of the United States and Canada for an annual comprehensive financial report. And whereas Department of Finance is responsible for Allegheny County's government complex financial operations. Now, therefore, we, as the County Commissioners of Allegheny County, take this occasion to express our appreciation and offer our congratulations to all individuals associated with the Department of Finance. In witness whereof, we have hereunto set our hands to be caused the seal of Allegheny County, Maryland to be affixed this 17th day of October in the year 2013. County Commissioners of Allegheny County, Michael McKay, Creed Brody, and William Valentine. Congratulations and thank sure. you for everything you do, sir. Okay, gentlemen, in our action agenda, item number three is the Rawlings Water Pump Station Design Engineering Firm Selection. Mr. Yoder, welcome, sir. Hello, Commissioner. It's two tough acts to follow. I don't have any citations or anything to discuss. <laughs> um, we're, we're working on, as, as you know from previous meetings, the uh, Rawlings Water Project. It's uh, it been it be bid in several phases. Uh, two have been bid, there'll be a third. A third and fourth phase will bid sometime in probably December time frame. Um, one of the projects is the upgrade of the pump station that will pump the water to fill the tank at Rawlings. Uh, we need to put in new pumps, new controls, a new electrical system. Most of the work uh, on the distribution system and the tanks we're doing doing in house, but this is uh, specialized electrical and control work, which we don't have the uh, expertise for that. So we want to use an outside engineering firm. Um, the, the firm is Eads out of Somerset, Pennsylvania. They have done the preliminary engineering report uh, for the project, and we've been very happy with uh, with their work. So we your, uh, request your approval to uh, award a contract for them, to, for them to do the design and the uh, contract administration with us. Any questions, commissioners? None. I'd like to entertain a motion to authorize the Utilities Division's Chief to sign a contract with Eads Group to perform the Detention Center Pump Station Upgrade Design and provide services during construction. Is there a... So moved. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Valentine, seconded by Commissioner Brody. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Diaz, looks like your item number four sales contract between <coughs> by and between PP, PPG Road Land LLC and the Board of County Commissioners. Yes sir, thank you again. Uh, item number four is uh, the county is going to purchase or sign a sales contract with PPG Land. Uh, they are the LLC that's associated with Allegheny Scrap, which is the company that bought the former A-liner plants in Mexico Farms. 
Elementary Industrial Park. There's a four acre parcel that is across the road from where the two plant sites were for Bay Liner, where Allegheny Scraps is now performing their operation. They do not need the four acre site across the road. And as it happens, that parcel lie right in between two existing county buildings, one the Burr Bridge building where Specs Chemicals is located, the other one is building 88-1 where McClure Johnson is located. Um, I think it behooves us to, uh, to purchase this land so we have contiguous property all on that strip in case either building would need to expand in the future or we have uh, then additional development land for a new building if it's so desired. So um, all that being said, uh, I'm here tonight to uh, request your approval execute the sales contract. Commissioner, any questions? No? Okay. I'd like to entertain a motion that the board approve the sales contract between PPG Road LLC and the Board of County Commissioners of Allegheny County, Maryland, and authorize the president to sign. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Brody, seconded by Commissioner Valentine. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number five, Commissioner, is the proposed Frostburg Industrial Park access road. That's exactly this there, Mr. Dias. Yes, sir. Uh, I believe it was, I'm going to say two years ago, maybe three now. Um, Cumberland Allegheny County Industrial Foundation <coughs> granted 20, 20 plus or minus acres back to Allegheny County Commissioners in the Frostburg Industrial Park. Um, at that time, CAC uh, owned that portion of land and most of the other acreage of the park was owned by the county, particularly the undeveloped acreage. Um, all that being said, uh, that site always lacked access. And over the last, for the upcoming federal fiscal year, ARC, the Appalachian Regional Commission, um, is offering 100% grant funding for its access road projects. So um, we're in a situation where we uh, presented that to the commissioners of the county's number one access road priority back in May. Um, and we're in a position where we need uh, some engineering work now to, uh, to get that project moving and, and get the road constructed so there would be an additional 20 plus acres available in Allegheny County, more specifically in Frostburg. Uh, Specs Engineering, um, so we're requesting that you approve the award of this contract to. They have done this process with us before with ARC access road money. It involves federal aid. It's quite an arduous process at times. They know the drill and they're very uh, uh, astute at uh, carrying this out and we've had our public works department our county engineer Adam Patterson's kind of um, shouldered this with us and done some reviews so I think we're at a point now we're comfortable with their proposal and want to move forward with this project too um, and I'll just say in closing before I ask you for your uh, official approval on this this project as well as one we just talked about with PPG road land is two of the four projects that the department had on the capital improvement program for the current year that the commissioners adopted uh, there were two other projects on there. One is a fiber extension down Route 220. Um, as we speak, uh, 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 I want to say Commissioner Rudd. Attorney Rudd and I have, uh, <laughs> have a draft of that agreement with the Maryland Broadband Cooperative in our hand. I think uh, in the very near future, hopefully, we're going to be able to come back to the Commissioner and ask for your blessing to uh, extend fiber from Crescent Town down to the uh, Route 220, 956 intersection with the Barton Business Park in the Decatur Lake. And uh, the last project on our list is uh, uh, a new spec building at the Barton Industrial Park. Um, uh, county engineering staff and myself have done preliminary discussions about uh, in the very near future putting a request for proposal out for design build services to construct a 40,000 square foot building on that site. So um, those four projects are in the queue. Two of them I'm asking you to approve tonight. And uh, hopefully we'll be back soon with updates on the other two. Very good. Commissioners? Questions? No. Gentlemen, I'd like to entertain a motion that the board accept a proposal from Specs Incorporated for the civil site engineering for the Frostburg Industrial Park Access Road. Do I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Valentine, seconded by Commissioner Brody. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Item number six, gentlemen, is a resolution 13-18, Rules and Regulations Governing Employees of Allegheny County, Maryland. Updates. Mr. Westfall. Thank you, Mr. President. Commissioners, uh, 
Uh, resolution 1318 is what my boss, the county administrator, refers to as uh, one of my periodic kitchen sink uh, resolutions. From time to time, it becomes necessary for us to re revise the rules and regulations and keep up with uh, changing federal regulations and other reasons. And, address uh, organizational structural needs and, and in this case uh, correct an unintentional omission I made in my last kitchen sink <laughs> uh, resolution. Uh, so, barring any questions, I uh, recommend uh, your adoption. Okay. Gentlemen, any questions, comments? I don't think so. No, that was just a house cleaning, your housekeeping policy procedures, so let's go. Okay. Right. Gentlemen, I'd like to entertain a motion to authorize the Board of County Commissioners to adopt the proposed changes to rules and regulations governing employees of Allegheny County, Maryland. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Brody. Seconded by Commissioner Valentine. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Everly. What say you on our consent agenda? Commissioners, we have two items for um, consideration here this evening. Trolling State Highway, DUI grant for Sheriff's Office. And uh, we have a, another kitchen sink motion from our Department of Public Works. Surplus vehicles, uh, actually, and, and equipment. We have eight vehicles uh, that uh, we have no longer uh, used to work. And three. Uh, pieces of equipment, a generator, an air compressor, and a steam cleaner. No one's going to go in competition with the other dry cleaning the steam cleaner. There is some interest in that. Darn Valentine. <laughs> I'm just trying to steal. <laughs> Commissioners, do you have any questions for our, our administrator about our consent agenda? Uh, can we send this list to our various volunteer fire departments? We can, sir. Uh, we actually work with the, the sheriff's office. They're going to help us on uh, eBay, um, marketing some of these items. Uh, but I understand that there may be an interest uh, from one of our municipal partners for a piece of equipment that's listed there to see. Okay. All right, gentlemen, I'd like to move that we accept our uh, consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner McKay, seconded by Commissioner Brody. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Everly, do you have anything that you'd like to share with us? Commissioners, we had uh, bid openings this week. <coughs> the procurement uh, request went out for an engineering vehicle for the surveying division. Uh, we had the uh, phase two of the Braddock Run Sewer Rehab uh, project uh, to, to open this week. And at the same time, we also open bids for miscellaneous bridge repairs. Mr. Rudd, you? you came a little bit late. However, uh, we would like you to sing your comments tonight. But you have no comments? No. Nothing to say? I was thinking maybe you and I could sing a duet. Ebony and Ivory, or um, <laughs> close of the meeting. <laughs> How are you on country music? Is it maybe Wagon Wheel or something like that? Nothing like that? Have you ever gone to a karaoke bar? Not, not a bar. I know you've gone to those, but <laughs> karaoke. No? No. Well, there will be a first. We'll do it together. There you go. We can go to a piano bar. All right. Don't have anything. Commissioners? Commissioner Brody. Yes, sir. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Mayor Clemens and, and his commissioners for the use of the building tonight. And it, it's nice to see everybody out. And also, I'd like to thank the commissioners of Western Port for being here this evening, show their support. Uh, it's, it's really good to be down here. Coming down the road tonight, I get thinking about all kinds of stuff, especially about what little I can remember the Luke Mill and the, and the Reminds me of my fifth birthday. My dad was waymaster down in, in the woodyard at the time. And a guy named Ray Bernard 
I went down to the mill and he presented me a white fiberglass hard hat that had West Vago on it. I still have to this day. And that was in the early 70s. In the early 80s, I started cutting timber for a gentleman and worked for the next five years producing wood for the mill. And then in the 90s, I was up at UPRC working and for several coal companies that produce coal to the mill. So I'm sure I'm just one of thousands in this local area that has many stories of, and good stories of the mill. So it's, it's my honor to be here tonight for that. So thank you. Excellent. Commissioner Valentine. Well, I, I'd also like to uh, say thank you very much for your hospitality here. Uh, this group of commissioners decided right away that we needed to take the show on the road and visit the different communities rather than making the people from all the communities come to our, our office building. And this is the second time we've been here and it's always wonderful to come here. Uh, it's great to pay tribute to a mill that's been here for so long and been such an integral part of our county uh, and I personally would like to say to Mr. Summerfield sitting there who is a representative for uh, Senator Clark it's glad to see you're back in the saddle again uh, Robin has always done great work for our county glad to see you here on an official capacity Robin thank you great to be here uh, this coming week uh, I'll be attending another uh, meeting of the governor's uh, force looking at uh, Marcel's shale drilling it's always an exciting afternoon, it's filled with wonderful memories. But uh, we're proceeding forward with that. Uh, maybe someday we'll, we'll get an answer from the state. Okay. Thank you very much. Moving right into our constituents for signing up. Ms. Poland? I want to know what animal control does. What are they for? Mr. Everly, would you give a synopsis of animal control? Today, animal control is a function of a community service, which is actually performed by a local nonprofit organization. And their job is to, uh, to the greatest extent possible, uh, work with our citizens in controlling companion pets that are out of control. Okay, well, we had a rabid raccoon up on the hill. Okay. They called everybody underneath the sun, and they didn't do anything. DNR, the sheriff, state, state police, and the health department. They didn't do a thing about it. And finally, at 3 o'clock, this was on September the 9th, on uh, a quarter of 3, the health department called and said for them to bring the raccoon down there, and the, but they closed at 4 o'clock. He couldn't have got everything done. So you know what they had to do? Dig a three foot trench to put the, the rabid raccoon in. So I always see in the paper a lot of times where people call about that and the people were up there, but nobody came up. So I just want to know why, why they couldn't have been up there. Okay, well, regardless of who maintains the function of animal control enforcement in the county, um, uh, local code it only controls companion pets, that's cats and dogs. With respect to wildlife, such as this raccoon, okay, DNR is the primary agency over that. Uh, as a matter of fact, it, it's illegal for anybody other than a DNR officer to touch or come into contact with a wild animal, even if it's sick. Well, it was out behind my garage, and that's what frightened me, because uh, if it hadn't been for the boys on the town, I would have known it was out there. And I, there's nobody around me. I'm clear at the end of the road. And I, I mean, there should have been somebody come up here to do that. I, I told the one guy, the guy that's over the town, that I had a shotgun. He said, "Well, go get it." And I said, I "Don't have any bullets." So, but I do have a double-barreled shotgun. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> that's all I want to know. But you Thank still you. have an answer. You're not alone. You're not alone. I had the same experience many years ago. And uh, it just I was then as frustrated as you are right now. Thank you. Okay. Mayor Clemens. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thanks for coming tonight. And uh, thanks for honoring the mill and Mr. Watcher for being here. And, um, 
Tonight we have with us our police commissioner, our police chief, um, several members of the community here with us, as well as our guests from West Newport. We appreciate uh, everybody coming out. Um, I was asked by a commissioner who was unable to come tonight, uh, is there any progress on the trails program uh, for this area? Uh, last time you were here, uh, it was addressed about uh, the trail, bike connection trail. Uh, has there been any progress on that? Will there be any progress on that? As uh, because not only are we an industrial area, we're also a tourist area, and uh, biking has become a huge interest in the area and uh, that's a safety issue for the town and we'd like to know if there's been any progress on that. Um, I understand that you all are supposed to be having a meeting with SHJ and that young lady is supposed to be updating you about a bike lane on 135. Um, as a trail between Luke and Westerport, um, that's on the radar but it's on the wish list of many things. Nothing has from a funding standpoint, it, it's considered, but it is listed on the on the list for the old trail that people used to walk from Western Port to come to the mill to work. So. Already, that's all I have. Thank you, yeah, sir. We'll, and we'll, we'll, I'll go ahead and call SHA and see if we figure out where we're at. But we were talking about that as we drove in to town, trying to figure out where where they're going to put a bike lane. And um, it's your community, but uh, to have those trucks going up and down and having a bike lane there, um, I think you all need to really think about that. Well, here's the problem. There is no lane, and they're riding on it anyway. I, I don't know. In, <laughs> so. in the state of Maryland, we have share the road. And um, I, that is... Um, I tend to believe that share of the road should come with um, uh, the roads are supposed to be taken care of by the taxes for the through the gasoline tax. That's another story where you guys got like 235 bucks for a pothole, and that was it for the whole year. 143. 143. Small. But anyhow, <laughs> but that being the case, we've now allowed bicyclists to basically be in charge of our roads, but yet they don't pay for the upkeep of them. That being the case, um, we will reach out again with SHA and we'll see where it's there, but remember, this stretch of road actually produces more highway taxes and more economic development than probably any other stretch of road in Allegheny County and probably even of Western Maryland. And so. Um, with as many trucks going through here, that it means dollars for the community. Um, it, like I said, it's your community, so I'm not going to. Um, we just need to be careful about it. We, we wish for a, a bike lane because I'm afraid if you open up Pandora's box, um, the state of Maryland would be lovely to, to shut uh, economic development down all for the uh, the, uh, the flag of riding a bicycle. Anyhow. Well, then for the record, I'll state this was a commissioner's question, not mine. I understand. No, no, no. No, no, no. no. I, I, just, I don't. <laughs> we will carry the water and we will have that conversation. So we will but take I care also of do appreciate you pointing out that this is one of the most heavily trafficked ah. areas in the state of Maryland, especially in western Maryland, and the fact that we are overlooked for funding so often for the upkeep of our roads, despite the fact that that 8,000 cars a day pass in front of the mill, my house, etc. cetera. Um, I think it's a, a, a shame. I, I understand that. And, uh, even though um, the PACE committee has not officially come out with their talking points, um, one of my pushes for, for restoration of the highway user funds to the municipalities and counties. You'll never get back to exactly what it was before, uh, but there needs to be some good faith at, uh, effort on the part of the state of Maryland. So, thank you, sir. Thank you. Also, I'd like to add right now, the, the county has been looking at a uh, trails master plan offered by uh, Maryland Department of Planning. They've been reviewing it, um, putting in suggestions of what the, uh, the county feels would look best for our local areas. And uh, the, the people in the public work 
have actually uh, offered the idea of instead of making long trails like used in this proposal, like a single bike trail from Carmel all the way to Luke, you know, it'd be tremendously expensive and probably not get the proper type of use. They are more interested in possibly creating smaller community trips and make it easier for people to commute right within the road area. And that would fall into the trail between Western Florida and Canada. Right. So this, that is one of the And to me, that's a safer place to encourage people to be. And I agree. <laughs> recreation and that kind of stuff. And not messing up with, and excuse me, uh, the cash cow that sits over here that we definitely need to not <clears throat> bother. It needs to produce more paper and more paper, employ more people, employ more people, because that's exactly what uh, Allegheny County needs to do is uh, invest more in its natural resources, its wood, its coal, and hence its paper. So. But we do expect to see Rick ride his little wooden wagon down 135. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the chief will it's, help him with traffic. It, it's <laughs> sturdy enough. It'll handle him. I'm not sure about him, but it'll handle him. <laughs> so, well, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Wilkinson. I guess I got a pet peeve. Every time I go down to the pool and go across that bridge into Kaiser, I didn't know we seated about a quarter of that bridge to West Virginia. There's a sign as soon as you make the turn on there, welcome to West Virginia. Now, I mean, I've worked this up to you once before, and I think you went down and you said, yeah, there was a sign on the old bridge. We had no sign welcoming us to Maryland. There's no sign welcome to Allegheny County. But they got on that slip bridge, about 14 signs, welcome to West Virginia, Mineral County, good place to do business and etc. Now I'm a taxpayer in this county, in the state, as they say, wild, wonderful Maryland. And you know, so uh, I would like to see us have uh, our name on that bridge down there. We, you know, have, as they say, put our two cents in that bridge, and, but we don't see nothing on ours. I guess there lies the problem, because we didn't put our two cents in the West Virginia funded the bridge. The whole thing. About 98 percent. 98. Well, I guess we can give them that piece of ground then. Put it in front of the bridge on over. The we can see State Highway on that also. Yeah, we definitely will. We I definitely mean, as far will. as I'm concerned, that was, it just goes through me like a knife. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're, uh, you know, we don't want to give away what we don't you know, have to. Right. Well, well, I, we, I would think the State Highway would be willing to put us on because any place else where you're entering the state, They've always got a sign that says, well, we can stay in Maryland. Well, we can have that conversation with State Highway. I wish you would, because like I said, I'd just like to see us have a sign on there that says, welcome down to the county. Certainly, you know, yeah. Something. Certainly. Uh, I didn't want to put it on there, but uh, I'm going back to the trails, too. I've talked to you before about the uh, four-wheel trails. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, while I'm here, I'm also going to take two more minutes for a good time. Please. Uh, as you say, they are going to open the trail back up now, I understand, I read in the paper. But with the state behind it, it'll never work out. Well, you, have you looked into any of that yet? You know, the trail's pretty much open, and I, and I looked into it because I ride constantly. And if, if your bike is not titled, it will be titled because it, it involves a tax. And then you'll get another state that will involve another tax. And for someone like me that, that bought a four-wheeler off of someone in West Virginia, for me to to actually get my bike and everything that's brought up to snuff to ride on the trail by the state of Maryland, I think it would cost me about 1800 bucks. So it, it's, it's not worth it for me. I'm not gonna do it. I'm going back down the Hatfield McCoy Trail like we always do. Well, we, we, we are working with a group of private individuals that's looking at having some trails put in, basically used to reclaim strip yeah. line property up through this area. Uh, if their plan works the way they hope, be able to ride from, Garrett, from Allegheny County well into Garrett County and all the privately owned trails. Um, we're negotiating with the state to get some help from the state to help that be a reality, but it would be privately owned trails so you wouldn't get into a lot of regulations like what Commissioner Brody was talking about here. Well, Commissioner Brody knows what I'm talking about. I mean, to put your bike, you have to get that uh, title and yeah. insurance. 
stuff like this. Yeah, I mean, it's astronomical, and you, you can't afford to do it. Yeah. I don't want to take any more time. That's why I was just looking at it. I'm heading down Hatfield McCoy Trail, too, uh, because down there they actually welcome you. They know you're there to spend money, and they want you. You better believe it. Uh, the DNR had proposed to put two additional trails on the eastern side of Simon Hill, and the citizens of Washington County and the county commissioners said, thanks, but no thanks. Rather not see see here what you want to go with that same type of situation. People need a place to ride, but they don't want to have all the regulations. Yeah, we had the big meeting up there with uh, I think it was National Resources. No, uh, yeah, uh, that was well attended, and I thought it was conducted very nice. But uh, I don't think they got our message. I really, truthfully, don't think they really got the message we was trying to tell. The people of this county and they around here want to spend their money here, but they're not trying to help us. Look down there at the Bramwell Western Gate right now. They just put that new trailer down there. They can't build motels and hotels fast down there. They are overpopulated. They run with people. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to remind everyone that our next public business meeting will be Thursday, October 31st, 2013, at 5 o'clock. That will be a theme night. We all come dressed up in costumes, but we. Uh, thank you for not tasting him tonight, Joe. I'd actually do us a favor if you jolt him a little bit. Can everyone see Bill Rudd dressed up as Riff Raff from the Rocky Horror Picture Show? I mean, he'd be perfect. You can, you can dress as Frankenberger. Uh, 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 he's the lady of Bearspray. I'm gonna come as Mama Cass. Anyhow, <laughs> remind everyone, please, to uh, see the news release about the Brawlings Water Project public meeting. Also, please see the news release about the emergency medical priority dispatch system and our news release about the compost site fall schedule. Thank you again, Mayor. Thank you again, Council. Thank you again, The Mill. We appreciate you coming and celebrating 125 years. Thank you very much for participating in your government, and I hope you have a nice evening.